Katrina's Creations. This is episode 127. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back each week. If you are a new viewer and you enjoy what you see, please click the little red subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon next to that, that will let you know anytime I post a video, which is always on Saturday and usually on Wednesday, and sometimes I throw extra stuff in between when I run across stuff I think you all would enjoy. So let's get started. I have a finished object. I finished my galaxy shawl. And let me sit back a little bit. I'm filming down in my kitchen this week instead of upstairs in the craft cave because my knee is killing me, and it, going up and downstairs is really, really hard for me right now. Actually, walking in general is kind of hard right now. Um, the cortisone shot I got in it a couple weeks ago apparently wore off, and now I'm back in pain again. So anyway, I'm filming downstairs in my kitchen, and Dave's not home, so I figure I can talk and not worry about getting in the way. So let me show you the finished shawl. Here it is. The yarn that I knit this with is Katia Darling. It took exactly two skeins of yarn. And this is all that I have left. So, yes, very little. It was like right down to the wire. And I do have to tell you a couple funny stories with this. I literally finished this this morning, uh, the cast off this morning. Anyway, I took this with me to work because I was at an event last night. Um, and there was time in between during the um, intermission and stuff where I could knit. Um, it was a Battle of the Books competition. Uh, I work for a library. And it was a Battle of the Books competition. And so, in, like I said, in between uh, the intermission, I was knitting because I had like a 15 or 20 minute break. I was one of the um, scorers. So um, what Battle of the Books is, is, is elementary and middle school children have to read a group of books and then they can be on a team and they compete with other teams and they have to answer trivia questions based on the books and the one that answers whichever team answers the most wins a uh, prize so the first there's um first second and third prizes are awarded so like i said i'm sitting there knitting and this little girl comes up to me and she says i started knitting when i was six and she says then i took a couple of years off and and then I started knitting again because I couldn't remember how to do it. So, and then in the middle of the conversation, she takes off and leaves. And the lady sitting next to me and I are looking at each other and she, we just went, squirrel, and off she went running. So I thought that was the end of it. Well, a few minutes later, she's back again. And this little girl is talking a mile a minute. Um, she sounded like she'd been sucking Healy. It was this little itty bitty voice and she just kept talking and talking and talking. So she, anyway, she's showing me her doll and she's, she has this little baby doll with her and she's now 11 and she was knitting a sweater. She was doing the sleeves with this purple yarn and she actually was doing a good job. Um, so anyway, she had to chat with me until the end of the intermission. But in the course of all this, now here's the funny story because I thought the little girl story was cute. But here's the funny story. Do not have liquid in your, your mouth when I tell you this because you might spit it out. Um, I was sitting at the judge's table, and if you remember two weeks ago, my supervisor invited us all over to her house to make fidget quilts for Alzheimer's patients. And so she is a crocheter. Um, in fact, I saw, I showed one of her um, afghans that she's making for her husband. Well, her husband was sitting beside me at the time because he works in the IT department. So he was working with the computers that were sitting at the table. I'm sitting next to him and his wife's on the other side, I think. And then there's this other lady sitting next to me. So this woman comes up and she goes, oh, that looks so complicated what you're doing. And so I held it up and I said, well, it's, it's not really all that complicated. I said, you just, you start on the lace section and then when you get to the end of the lace, you start knitting back and forth. And she goes, oh, well, I wasn't talking about that. I was like, she says, I just think it's interesting how much work it was to knit the stripes into it. The guy next to me is like going, <sighs> I could tell he was about ready to crack up laughing. I'm trying to hold a straight face and not let my eyeballs roll at that point. 
So I just kind of held up the yarn and went, it's striped yarn. I didn't do anything. I just knit it. And she goes, oh, and off she teetered on these high heels that I would have killed myself if I wore something like that. Um, but yeah, that was the funny story. It was like, I couldn't believe somebody didn't know yarn came striped. So she thought I had actually intentionally knitted the stripes into this. Now, I have not even blocked this yet because you can see that these lace edges have points to them. So after I finish filming, I'm going to block it. So I will show you the finished, total finished blocked item next week. Um, but this is how it is so far. It is a small uh, shawl. I thought the one that my local yarn shop owner made looked bigger than this. So I'm not quite sure how, because I followed the pattern, but it's, I mean, it's it's definitely big enough as far as like it's a little, like a shawlette type of thing, but I thought hers looked bigger. Maybe it'll block out a lot, because I use the same yarn and everything. Maybe I knit tighter than she does. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm real happy with it. And this week, I do have a stitch marker on here. This week, I what I had done is I knit from here down of the lace panel, and then I picked up the edges along here because these were all yarn overs right on the end of the lace. And so it's very easy to pick up those stitches. Um, so I picked those up and then it's just short rows back and forth to actually shape the shawl. So that is the Galaxy. And like I said, it is a free pattern on Ravelry. It was very simple. Um, I've spent three weeks making it, but that was only working on it a couple hours here and a couple hours there. So, yeah, so that one was finished object number one. Well, actually, <laughs> finished object. That's the only one that I have this week that's finished. I did get a bit done with my husband's um, scarf that I'm making. And, of course, I'm right in the middle of the row, so I can't open it up. But I've gotten quite a ways with it. I think I've knit maybe another inch on it. And this one I did, this is linen stitch. There is a tutorial up on how to do the linen stitch. This scarf is called the Cirrus, and it is also a free pattern on Ravelry. And I am down to, the, well, the ball seems like I never am going to finish it at this point. I feel like it just keeps multiplying. I don't know. We'll get it done. Uh, so anyway, that is that. He's not going to be wearing it this year, but it is so soft. I'm so happy. I have two other skeins of this that a very dear um, YouTube follower, uh, one of my subscribers, sent to me. So I will have a matching scarf, not in this pattern. This one has taken so long. It's easy, but it takes a while. I might actually try something crocheted, um, but Dave and I will have matching scarves for next winter. And it is so soft. It's just snuggly. It'll feel really good up against with, when it's cold out. It's going to feel wonderful. So the next thing I have is my sweater. This is the Flax Light. And if you watched the tutorial last week, I showed how to pick up the stitches and start the sleeves. And here is my sleeve. This is where it started. You can see where I was last week. So I've knit up through two decreases so far. So I've marked each of my decreases with a stitch marker that's removable. And I believe from my size pattern, I have 17 decreases. So, um, and I changed the needles. If you watch the tutorial, you'll see I'm using 16 inch needles and I just found that it was too cumbersome and I happen to have some nine inch circulars and that's going much, much faster because as the sleeves get smaller, you know, I really didn't want to have to magic loop them. And I had a stitch, um, a needle holder like tucked over here so the stitches wouldn't fall off because they are kind of scrunched onto the nine inch needles kind of tightly. But I just stuck a rubber band here because they kept popping out of the needle holder and then I kept having stitches sliding off. Um, because, you know, it's, I haven't decreased enough that I've got a lot of spare room here. So, yeah, cheap fix rubber bands. So I did that, and that is my Flax Light. 
which is also a free pattern. I think I was joking around about this last week that I, I seem to knit a lot of free patterns. Although the one I'm going to show you next is not a free pattern. This is the Fractal Doily. And this, I believe it was like $3 and 55 cents was three dollars and something three and a half somewhere in that ball ballpark so last week I haven't done as much with this because I was running out of yarn and it took me a while to find the right yarn I went and I went and looked at one place and they didn't have the right color all they had was off-white and I needed white so I only got four rows done this week. So here's the one side that's finished. And then this is the section I'm on now is the second wing or vein as they call it. And this is how much yarn I've got left on the vein that I'm working on or on the skein that I'm working on. And so I was afraid of getting halfway across and running out and then being in a weird spot. So I finally found some more. I got this at um, Hobby Lobby. I think this was Aunt Lydia's, and I could not find Aunt Lydia's in white at the couple of stores I went to. I kept finding it in off-white or in the, um, the larger size, which is, I think, a 10. I think a 10. No, this is a 10. I kept finding it in the size 3. And I didn't need the three, I needed the smaller. So I finally went to Hobby Lobby, and like I said, they didn't have the Aunt Lydia's, but they had this, it's called Yarn, it's called Artiste. And it is 400 yards, and it's size 10 crochet thread. And I took a guess that it was gonna be the same color, and when I compare the two of them, they don't look the same here, but when I look at them, comparing this to here, there you can see, they're they're pretty, pretty close. I think they're close enough that I'm going to be able to get away with it. The lighting here is not the, as good. So in the in the lighting, this looks more off white than this does. Um, but in real life, they're they're close. So now that I've got more, I can pick up where I left off last week. So I am hoping to make a good dent into that this week. So those are my works in progress. Now I thought I would show you, we don't have a review the product this week, but we have a, um, I guess you would call it a skill sent in or, yeah, a, a DIY, how to, maybe we'll call it a how to, uh, sent in by Yoka. Now let me tell you a little bit about Yoka before we get started. Uh, it's Yoka Schurman Nagel. And you have seen, she sends a lot of pictures in through the show and tell, you'll see. And she has sent some recently of some yarns that she has spun. Uh, you see her over on Facebook as well that she has spun some yarns and she's posted those pictures there. Uh, she also has a blog site, which is, and I'll put it down here because I probably would massacre pronouncing it. Uh, I think it's Dredja, Dredja Loss. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'll put it down across here so you can look at it. But she has a blog, and it is in Dutch. However, you could use Google Translate to be able to read what the blog says. But uh, her pictures are usually pretty self-explanatory so that you can figure out what's going on. But she and I were chatting back and forth, and she recently got an e-spinner. Now, an e-spinner is an electronic spinning wheel. Uh, I know she has a regular wheel, but she got... Um, it's a tabletop, and it's, it's you know, about this big. It's pretty much just the bobbin piece and um, the orifice where the yarn come, where the yarn goes into, where you feed it in. And, um, yeah, it's a much smaller, and it's electronic. And so I asked her what she thought of it, and she actually likes it a lot. And I was asking about, well, how do you, does it have one speed, and you have to try to spin at that speed? And she said, no, you can actually control the speed that, that the um, spinner is working at. So that was good to know. 
And so she sent me some information. She has gotten into blending her own yarns. Now, I thought I would tell you a little bit about what you're going to see before you see it, uh, because the captions can only carry, tear, the captions can only explain so much. So let me try to explain it first. When you start to spin yarn, you can buy it in already processed rovings, which are like fiber strips that are sort of like ropes, and they're about that thick. And you spin from that right onto your wheel. You can buy them already processed and ready to go like that. Or you can do it yourself and you can develop your own colors. You can pretty much customize everything. And so that's what she's gotten into. In fact, Yoka has done some dyeing with some natural fiber or some natural dyes and things as well. And those have been on some of the show and tells and over on Facebook as well. So in the first picture, you are going to see a, a bunch of fiber just loosely laying together. And then you're going to see it sorted out. And then you will see a carding drum. Now, a carding drum is a, it rotates on a cylinder and you crank it and it has like combs in it. Because when you try to spin uh, the fiber into yarn, you have to have all the fiber lined up, you know, end to end. You don't want it kind of jumbled like this. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be a very rough yarn. So you want your fibers to line up. And so the carding pulls those fibers all in the same direction. There's a manual carding, which kind of looks like two giant pet brushes um, that you comb back and forth like this to try to line up the fibers. It's very time consuming. So they have what's called a carding drum, which is, like I said, a big cylinder with those same uh, combs on them. And you crank it and the fiber just goes through and it, it pulls the fibers in the right direction. Now, what Yoka is doing is blending different colors on her carding drum as she's carding it. And so it, it all mixes the fibers together and creates a color blend that is customized uh, by her. You could do this totally manually by using a thing called a hackle, which is like a board with nails that come up through it. And like, say I wanted to create um, something with pinks and grays, I could take pink fiber and lay the pink fiber out across it and then lay gray fiber out across it and then maybe white or black fiber across it. And then you pull those fibers through those those uh, nails that are up and you do it repet uh, repetitively until uh, repeatedly. Repetitively? Repeatedly. I'm not sure which. You know what I mean, though. You continue to do it. We'll say it that way. You continue to pull it through there until the fibers line up. But in the process of doing that, it also blends the fibers so that they're evenly distributed, not in like clumps of color. Uh, so it kind of blends them together. And then you would put them together and spin them. So you can also do this on the carding drum. So that is what she's doing on the carding drum. And then at the very end, she shows a picture of what it looks like when it's all spun up. So now that I've tried to explain what you're going to see, um, I'm going to let that footage roll so you can see it for yourself.
Now let's check out what you all are making. Now in our come and get it section this week, we have Annie's Craft Store has a sale on their cotton bamboo blend. It's called Premier Yarns Bamboo Fair, and it's 273 yards and it's $5.99. So that is their sale uh, yarn that they have. They also have some uh, kits and crochet books on sale in their clearance section. So that's Annie's Craft Store. Blueprint, which is the old Craftsy, has Burnett Satin Yarn on sale for $2.09 and Sprightly Super Bulky on sale for $3.15. Consumer Crafts has Lily Sugar and Cream. That's what you traditionally make dishcloths out of. Uh, it's 100% cotton. They have that on sale for $1.57 a skein, and they have like over 100 different color variations you can choose from. Create for Less has Red Heart It's a Wrap on sale for $8.59, and it's 1,100 yards of yarn. And you can like create, it's called It's a Wrap. So you could create a wrap, you could create a shawl, you know, whatever. Um, 1,100 yards goes a long ways, and it's only $8.59. Hobium yarn, uh, if you saw earlier this week, I put a real, real quick video up. I happened to run across a sale they were offering. It was like a little flash sale, so I wanted to put that up so you guys could check it out. Uh, but if you go over to Hobium, and the links to all of these sales are down below, uh, if you click on Hobium and you go over and click, once you get to the Hobium site, you can check on their clearance or their stars of the month, and that's where you'll see some deals on their yarn. They do sell yarn by the skein, but if you buy it in a package of like five, I think they come in packages of five, um, then the more yarn you buy, the cheaper it is per skein. So, um, and you usually end up needing more than one skein for a project anyway, so it is cheaper to buy in bulk. So you can do that over at Hobium. Knit Crate, I will have a video up this next uh, week sometime. Um, I know it's getting shipped out today and it's coming from Florida. So, you know, probably midweek there will be a video on me unboxing the latest Knit Crate. So be watching for that. Uh, but Knit Crate offers you a discount on your first subscription box of 20%. You do need to use the coupon code KCREATIONS20 to get that 20%. And uh, you also earn every month that you get a knit crate, you earn stash points. And those stash points then can be cashed in when you build up enough points to put towards yarn or other products that they offer. So they kind of work like cash, like bonus bucks or something. 
Knitpicks um, has bear yarns for 20% off. Now, bear yarns are undyed skeins, and they have them in all different um, bases, meaning, you know, the what they're made of, what the fiber content is. They have them in all different weights of yarn, but they're undyed. So if you want to play around with dyeing yarn, that's a good time to do it. And I'll put a little card up here if you want to learn how to dye yarn. My granddaughter and I dyed some yarn together. I think I have two videos actually available that are on yarn dyeing. Um, I just use food coloring, so all you would need is drops of food coloring and vinegar. You can also deal, um, you can also dye with uh, Easter egg dye, and this time of the year it's easy to get. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in experimenting with dyeing and doing it at a cheap rate, you can get it for 20% off over at Knit Picks. Knit Picks also has a monthly catalog that they send out, and the April one just came. Look at that gorgeous shawl. But, um, I'm not going to show you all of the pictures in the magazine. Uh, you just have to sign up to be on their newsletter and you can get it. But uh, there's a couple in here that are beautiful. I liked this one right there. And it kind of tells you a little bit about their yarns, new patterns, things like that. Um, I love the colors. I have a shawl that's very similar in color to this. But there's that one. And then I actually have a shawl. It is the Drakenfels that I made. I made two of them, actually. But the purple one that I made, I used two of the yarns from Knit Picks. And they just happen to be the ones in the, on the advertisement here. Um, there is this one, which is Andromeda Speckle. And these are Hawthorne yarns. And then there's this one, which is a tonal, it's like variegated tonal, um, kind of a fuchsia purpley color. It has some purples in it, but also has some kind of a magenta. That's the word I'm looking for, magenta. So there's that one. And I used, with these two colors, a dark purple um, that I got from a giveaway that I won from Muscle of Yarn. And it is all alpaca. And... I was wearing it actually last night at the uh, um, Battle of the Books, but I love that shawl because it is just, it's so soft and it's, but it's lightweight and it's warm and it's just snuggly. I just like it. Sort of like this sweater. This is one of my favorites as well because it's just, it's a, it's a cuddly, cuddly thing to wear. They have some crochet patterns. There's a whole bunch of crocheted shawls here. And here are some crochet hooks. They sell knitting needles as well as crochet hooks. Um, so all kinds of stuff. It's a lot of fun to look through. And yeah, so that was fun getting that magazine. So the, let's see, Leisure Arts. Leisure Arts is selling their shawl in a ball for $9.99. They also are selling um, DI yarns for 99 cents a skein. Now, they are only 65 yards per skein, so they're small, but they are only 99 cents. So um, if you're looking for lots of different colors and it's cheap, so there it is. And they also have a sale running on their pattern books, which is what Leisure Arts are mostly known for. Um, I really don't think of Leisure Arts and think of yarn. I tend to think of the craft books for knitting and crochet books. Um, but anyway, over in their clearance section, they have some pattern books starting at $3. So, um, yeah, that was a lot of fun over there, too. And Lion Brand. Now, this is exciting. This is probably the best deal of the week here. Lion Brand is offering a site-wide sale of 20% off. Yeah, 20% off for Lion Brand. I might have to do a little shopping. I'm not sure. I need yarn like a hole in the head, but you know, anyway, anyway, we won't even go there, but the, you do need a coupon code to get the 20% off. It is site-wide 20. I'll put it up here because it is all in caps, um, 
but that will give you 20% off of the Lion Brand yarn. Like I said, all of the links are down below for all of the sales, and if you click through those, I do get a small commission out of any sales that you do, but those will take you right over to those websites. So upcoming videos that we have this week, uh, there will be, like I said, a knit, a knit crate unboxing at some point this week. And on Wednesday, I'm doing something a little different that I thought would be kind of fun. Um, I always try to wear some knitwear that I've made or crochet wear now that I'm crocheting. Um, I thought I would pick 10 of my favorites because you've never, you all have never seen all of them. So I thought it would be fun to do these are a few of my favorite things and show you 10 of the favorite uh, projects that I've made and what they're called, you know, what the name of the pattern is and things like that. Um, and a little bit about them. So that is going to be Wednesday's video. So like I said, two more videos this week. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great week and I'll see you Wednesday and one other day. I'm not sure when, depends on when the knit crate comes in. So uh, again, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. It does move me up in the recommends column over on YouTube so people will um, it shows up so people will come over and check me out. So anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, I...